guy hits folks like he's on a conference power tour. He's one of the best power hitters around camps here every year. And uh, swinging, of course, the Dale Brum guard I see here. And I see you working with a few guys earlier on. What, what are the keys to the swing as you explain it to the campers here at Softball Magazine? Uh, explosive hips is a big thing. Stride and fast hands. And when you take that, when you take that stride, a lot of hitters are short stepping it. You know, especially the, some of the older campers here. Uh, you got to have a, a strong step forward in order to get the hips to throw open. Would you agree with that, Rick? Absolutely. Um, and I do a lot of drive from my back leg. I'll even almost kind of turn my front leg to generate more hip movement and push off. If you notice that that front leg comes down hard, if that can be a hard plant, then you can get a better weight transfer the hips open more freely. Yes, yeah, stay strong with the front leg. If not, if you're dipping, you're going to miss hit up or down. Uh, so this is a strong leg plant and then drive the hips through and then bring the hands through drive the hands to the ball. And rotation, of course, is absolutely key, but uh, you find that if you do that properly, you get a really good rotation pretty much automatically. Would you agree with that? I would agree, uh, absolutely. And it's got to be smooth. The more I try to load up, and I see a lot of guys try to load up, I almost tense up too much and it's not smooth. The hardest balls I hit, uh, it's, it's very relaxed, very smooth. Would you say that's more of a tempo issue where you start easy and then you build up to the point where you explode when your foot hits the ground? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I see people, they say over, people are over swinging, but I often think that's just people start out too fast, you know what I mean? Yes. Rush it from the start. So you take all that power, your hips are, you're taking a good stride, your hips are throwing open, just like you're throwing a ball, and then you take all that power, you're talking about your hands. Hand path always goes where? To the ball. Yep. Take the hands right to the ball. Uh, I get a lot of wrist snap and just whip it through. And do you manipulate the snap or is it just because the hand path is so fast it happens? Yeah, it just happens. Uh, and and so, some of it is the grip, but it's just a natural whip through. I don't even the, think about it. The faster you can throw your hands, the faster it's going to go. And it takes a lot of trust to throw your hands down in a knee high pitch, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But uh, you know, you see a lot of campers that will try to scoop or try to lift it up. and. Uh, Take your hands down to the ball and whip it through. Do not do this. It's down here. And they got to understand if they use that swing and you hit the middle of the bottom, you're going to get that laser riser, you know, line drive that people always want to get. But you know, there's always that tendency to scoop it up for. It's not a high percentage. <laughs> uh, one term we always use is to drive it. Don't try to lift it. Yes. Um, you talk about your grip. Talk a little bit about your grip here. So right now, um, with as many swings as I'm doing, I'm only dropping two hands or two fingers. Uh, normally in a game, I do drop my pinky Open on the that bottom, up so we can see what's all off the bottom of that. Yep, I drop my pinky. And pretty much, Ricky, every great hitter I've seen drops at least a pinky off the Yes. End. And I started out here when I first started playing, and I just slowly kept moving myself down until I got comfortable here. People say you lose too much control, but I've always, since I've been in my 30s, used overlap, and I, you know, I do go backside quite a bit now when I play young kids, and I think the control is always there. What's your feeling? Yes, I, actually, I feel like I've gotten more control. Now, if for some reason I'm off that day, I will move my hand up a little bit uh, just to try, you know, correct something. It's amazing the amount of conference players though, that have a conventional baseball grip. It is. You know, you don't see much overlap anymore. And how old are you now? I'm 37 now. You know, so you know, you're still relatively a kid, but the last the last ten years, you don't see much overlap anymore. No, no. Um, see, some of the older guys here have it, but not many. Uh, the other thing um, is that I've learned through the years is a lot of guys have a lot of hand movement, and for me, that just messes me up. So when I'm getting ready, my hands are back here. Even the bat is ready to go. That way, I'm only here. Not all this. And the more I tried to do that, um, my timing was off, miss hits, more things like that. What are the two things we worked on? So I worked on the stride. And show us what you did different. Well, I was lifting it up and putting it down, like that. I was starting with the weight on the back of my on my back leg, and then put the stride down like that. You, you had short strided before, and you probably added yeah. what a foot, a foot, twelve inches. Yeah, at least. 
And then what would you do when you took the long stride? Well, it helped first you... of all, it makes my hands come back. And it, yeah. it makes your hands come back connected, and also to help you throw the hips open, wouldn't yeah, it? throw the hips open, that's exactly right. And so then you use that power of throwing the hips open to do what? Throw the hands. And where did you throw the hands? Throw the hands towards the ball. So if you get a knee high pitch or a chest high pitch, doesn't throw matter. You don't try to loop, you just take your hands. Nope, you let the bat do the work in terms of putting the ball, uh, the bat on the ball, and the right trajectory will happen. And do you think about the snap at all? Uh, a little bit, but it's all more natural, really. If you get everything going right, the snap just kind of happens naturally. I think. If you fast, you control your hips, control your hands, the yep. more natural the snap will happen. It kind of happens. It kind of follows. If you, if you, and particularly if you throw the hands, the wrists seem to snap better. What did you think of the Dean Marini bat? That's a great bat. I mean, that boy, if you hit it right, it'll go. It's, it's great. Uh, my name is Asad. I'm 34 years old. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. You know, so I was having some issues with my team. Uh, said to go talk to Bogey about, you know, opening up my hips and, you know, seeing what I could do to improve on my power and my overall hitting. Um, so I had approached, approached you, Bogey, and, you know, you saw me hitting, and I asked you for some help. So when we realized that my hips weren't the issue, my hips were opening up fine, you had suggested that, you know, I use my hips to throw my hands to the ball because it wasn't my hips, it was my bat path. My bat path wasn't good, so I was always trying to come down on everything when a ball would have been flat instead of coming down I should have been going straight so using my hips to throw increased the velocity and the distance that I was getting with my uh, with my swings so you know you're swinging down and everything trying to get that rising line trying to get like that th that lift on the ball all the time when it when just hitting the ball hard and straight and following the ball instead of what I and want so now to you're do. just taking always the hips slow the hand path wherever the ball is and Yep. So when you trust it, right? Just like you said. So when you when you throw your hips at it and you throw, use your hips to throw your hands, as crazy as that sounds, the logic on it works and the ball travels. I mean, you saw the, the distance oh, that yeah, I was you're getting. Just killing the ball, and then I'll tell you what. Every time you hit a ball that was around your thigh or waist, that's when you got that rising waist of line. Yeah, because that I like. So when it was a lower pitch, you, you come down on it because it's lower. Yeah. And that ball rises. But if it was if it's like stomach to chest, you know, you kind of want to just swing straight through it. There you go, kid. Big ticket. Oh, he's right up on the back bed, Big Daddy. Here we go. Swinging the old DB. One three. Uh oh. Uh oh, J Mag. I gotta get it up on the chest. Oh, Daddy. What are you doing? Get the wallet out, J Mag. Didn't miss that one, though. Son, he said, "Where's that pond?" I said, "It was hitting him in last." Four and nine, money ball, right here. Come on, right here, come on, son, get to the next, get to the next round here, big man. That's your take. Here we go, four and nine. There you go. Smoke that one out of here. Get up out of here. Bonus baby. Five ten. Bonus baby. Good day. He messed that one and hit yeah, it out of here. Yeah, he did. Spun it right out of here. Yep. 6 11. Oh, ah! Six hey, good good job, man. Good job. Good okay. job. Hey. Hey, got the monkey off your back. We got the first one, eh? Corny, it's got to be the bat, right? It's all the bat. What can I tell you? And our engineers back in Hillsboro um, at DeMarini do a fantastic job when it comes to. Uh, you know, coming out with new barrel technologies and just just the process of these continuous fiber or not alive barrels has been fantastic. I turned 81. I had no energy. I was loosening the loafers and had no desire to swing. And then a friend told me about the new De Marini Senior not alive line of bats. Now my confidence is back and I'm hammering away like a 25-year-old. Swing De Marini's, my friends.